Hey, church, here we are. Hey, thanks for joining us. Wherever you are in the world, we're so glad that you're here. Can I take this second to remind you, there is this little thing called Pastor Chat, and somebody is available there right now to speak with you, pray with you, talk with you, process with you. Um, that's just one of the things we get to do here at Church Home to, to serve you in your spiritual journey. And I do want to remind you, wherever you are on the spiritual spectrum, you're going to figure out real quick that I'm a Jesus guy, I believe he's the superhero of the world and the change agent of the world. But whatever you believe, Church Home is a safe space for you to uh, be on the journey, you know, process through life and uh, figure out what is real and what is true to you. So uh, please know we're here for you. We love you. And, uh, I just never want to take it for granted that you've taken time. So many people all over the world now are practicing their faith with us. Um, they're sitting in living rooms and cafes with a few friends using this content to continue their journey, their search, their prayer, their receptivity to all that God has provided for us. These are unusual days. Here we are, the last Sunday of 2023. I got to be honest with you. I cannot believe that in a few short moments, we are going to walk our way into 2024. So cue all the New Year's resolutions. If you are a part of the Western world that I grew up in, um, this is an uninteresting kind of wonky, funny subset of time where it's like Christmas is over. You're still probably feasting a little bit on the cookies and the turkey and the stuffing. At least I hope I love leftovers. But uh, maybe you're already going, okay, I got to change my diet. I got to change my habits. If you're like me, you've downloaded a new mindful app. You have determined you are going to work out. This is going to be the year. I'm going to look like uh, Brad Pitt at the Fight Club. Um, this is my year, right? I'm going to do it. And everybody's getting gym memberships and everybody's determined they're going to read a hundred books, uh, this year. And I got to be honest with you. I don't know if you'll read a hundred books, but you may find this fascinating. My wife last year averaged, I think a book or two a week. So, uh, I think that's like a hundred books a year. So I'm figuring this out in real time right now. It's not that encouraging to me, but she is a ferocious reader and I am a ferocious conversationalist. So here's the little caveat I want to give to non-readers everywhere. Why read when you have friends that do, who will have coffee with you and talk to you all about it? It's kind of like reading a book. So hope that's an encouragement to everyone. But um, I want to take a few moments to actually talk to you about benedictions. And I'm going to take us in a moment to this man by the name of Paul, who is inspired by God to write what we now call the New Testament and nearly half of it. In fact, some people believe he wrote some two thirds of it. His name wasn't always Paul. His first name was, was Saul, actually. And he has this incredible, phenomenal encounter with God, so much so that he marks it by changing his name. He changes his trajectory of life. He changes what he does with his time and his money and his words and his actions and his family and his friends. Jesus literally changed everything for Paul. What I'd like to do is as we are finding ourselves on the last Sunday of 2023, what are some of the last things Paul says in some of his divine writings? And I'm going to take you to what we call four benedictions. Now, benedict, benediction simply means like closing blessing or closing prayer. It simply means when you've said everything you need to say, how are you going to conclude it? How are you going to almost um, uh, bring it all together in a culmination? It is a benediction. Now, some of us grew up in church and we went to churches and communities that literally someone would give the benediction and typically express itself in like a closing blessing. And we bless you and may God keep you and cause his face to shine you and shine upon you and watch over you and keep your family and keep your children and keep your family. That's a, that's a benediction. I want to give you four benedictions today. And uh, I've got my cell phone with me and we are going to, <laughs> social media, is real, and we're going to read uh, four closing benedictions given to us by Paul, but of course, inspired by God. And I think it's going to be an incredible encouragement to you. And basically, here's what I'm, I'm hoping. In the few moments we share here, I'm hoping that these give you kind of a, 
a momentum. I was going to say thrust for the new year, propel you in to the new year. Listen, I'm not against resolutions. I'm not against new habit patterns and new desires. And if you weren't a reader, now you're going to be a reader. I think all those intentions are noble and wonderful, but oftentimes we don't do them, right? So then they end up kind of discouraging us and frustrating us. And if you're like me, I have quite literally lost count of how many times I have set out to be like, I am going to do this this year. Uh, Last year, it was push-ups and sit-ups every day. And I'm happy to announce that happened about 17 days out of the entire year last year. Uh, (laughs) So this year, I'm really, really going to do it. But what if I could give you some divine supernatural closing comments on 2023 that would propel you into 2024. So in no particular order, I have pulled out four of my favorite closing comments by Paul that I think will give you incredible strength and life. Now, before I read these four benedictions, these four closing comments, I, I wanna remind you that my passion. And I honestly feel like what God's asked me to do in this community is emphasize him and by doing so to put you and me and our performance in its place. Do I think what you do matters? Yes. Do I think the decisions you make matter? Yes. Do I think that they matter and influence the trajectory of your life as much as what God does? No way. He's the point. He's the source. He's the strength. He's the supernatural phenomenon that can change 20 24. I'm going to go on record to say I celebrate human grit. I think the human spirit is incredible, what we're capable of. I'm obsessed with learning about these climbers who climbed the largest peaks in the world. They're phenomenal to me, right? Like Free Solo. How crazy was that documentary? It's amazing what humans can accomplish. It really is. But when it comes to the state of your soul, oftentimes all of our efforts and all of our achievements and all of our accomplishments and all of our trophies don't really amount to much in the well-being of our internal world that we call our soul. I believe that these four closing benedictions can be like food for your soul. And like I said, can fuel you going in to 2024. I honestly can't believe I'm saying 2024. Now, I want to remind you, the source of these benedictions, of course, is God, but the vehicle in which God uses, is this man formerly called Saul, now Paul, by the time we read his words today. And this man, Paul, has had a true, and deep, and wonderful, and extraordinary encounter with God, one that I am praying for you. I know in the month of, this month of December, we talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, we talked about all these questions in the Christmas story. And we talked about how we are saying, hey God, you gotta meet us. And so I want to say it one more time in December, the last day of December, as Paul, as we read these potent, powerful words by Paul, I want to remind you that you and I also need a supernatural encounter with God. And I believe that we're going to have that. And maybe, just maybe, we'll have that encounter today as we read these words that are thousands of years old, and yet they are as pertinent and potent and relevant today as they have ever been. Romans 5, 6, 7, and 8 are said to be some of the greatest writings in human history and maybe laden with the most profound and potent theological concepts in all of writings ever given to humanity. As we get come to the close of Romans 8, we've sifted through Romans 5 and 6 and 7, and we get to 8, Paul seems to be giving closing remarks, a benediction. And he says this, so now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over every death, all death, life's troubles, fallen angels, dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There's no power above or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which he has lavished. That means given over and over and over, piled upon us through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. Listen to those words one more time. No power 
that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love. Here's how I think we can close 23 and move into 24. Here's my first observation, benediction, and closing remark for this year. Did you know that there is nothing that can distance you from God's passionate love for you? Nothing, not unbelief, not doubt, not anxiety, not fear, not moral failure, not lack of performance, not discouragement, depression, disease, nothing can separate you, not from his stagnant love, but his active, passionate love towards you. So when you feel a million miles away from his love, that's a lie. When you feel distance between you and God, that's untrue. He is near to you. In fact, I'll take it a step further. The scripture says he is near especially to the brokenhearted. This world is full of brokenhearted people, countries, whole people groups that feel brokenhearted in the midst of war and pestilence and disease and terrorism and loss and pain. But nothing can distance you from God's love. As you go into the new year, accept that there is no distance between you and God's passionate love. There is no distance. Though your brain and your body and your soul might tell you, you have failed God again and you are a million miles away from him and a million miles away from his plan and his purpose. I've got good news with this particular benediction. This closing blessing is, I wanna bless you and your family and say, yes, you have no distance between your soul and God's passionate love. Now that'll help you as you go in to the new year. I got good news for you. If you don't make good on your new year's resolution, that has not changed or distanced you from God's love at all. Okay, that is my closing blessing number one. Now I wanna read to you my closing blessing number two. By the way, you can find that first closing benediction in Romans chapter eight, verses 38 and 39. I'm reading from the Passion Translation. And I wanna take you to the end of a letter, the second letter Paul wrote to Corinthians, to the church in Corinth, that ancient city, that culture center. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11, 12, 13, and 14, finally, beloved friends, be cheerful. Repair whatever is broken among you as your hearts are being knit together in perfect unity. Live continually in peace in God, the source of love and peace, and he will mingle with you. Let me read that again. Live continually in peace and God, the source of love and peace will mingle with you. God, the source of love and peace will mingle with you. Greet and embrace one another with the sacred kiss. All of God's holy people send their greetings. Now, may the grace and joyous favor of the Lord Jesus Christ and the unambiguous love of God and the precious communion that we share in the Holy Spirit be yours all the time, continually. Amen. I'm struck by this benediction today. I want to draw your attention to that phrase that I read a couple of times. Live continually in peace in God. God, who is the source of love and peace, will mingle with you. He's going to mingle with you. He's going to be with you. I want to declare this over your life. As you go into a new year, God's going to mingle with you. God's going to hang with you. You ever been to a party where people are just mingling? Everybody's just kind of meandering and mingling. And, you know, sometimes it can be a little wonky and sometimes it can be a little bit, you know, kind of unnerving because you're like, man, who am I going to talk to? But you ever been at a party where the mingling just goes so well? And everybody's just the conversations and the little pockets and circles of people in the, maybe it's a cocktail party or it's a party before the wedding ceremony or it's right after the wedding ceremony, right before the reception begins. And recently I was at a wedding and there was kind of like a cocktail hour before the reception begins. And we were all just kind of standing around and everybody's sharing stories and sharing compliments and encourage each other. It was one of those mingling sessions that just felt meaningful got to meet a bunch of new people and fresh faces and got to meet each other and encourage each other and laugh and figure out what we had in common. You know what God wants to do with you in 2024? He wants to mingle with you throughout your day. 
It wants to meet you in unexpected settings, spaces, and places. Look for it. Anticipate it. He's going to mingle with you at the party. He's going to mingle with you at work. He's going to mingle with you at night, maybe even in your dreams, the visions and dreams. He's going to mingle with you and speak to you and remind you of what? That he loves you, of his love and his peace. The unambiguous love. I know what ambiguous love is, but it's unambiguous. The love of God and the precious communion you're going to share with him in 2024. Hey, let's put God to the test. Let's ask him if these closing blessings are true, then may they be true about me and you. I'm going to look for God's mingling in my life in 2024. Maybe you're watching this at night and maybe you're in a car. Maybe you're on your way somewhere. Maybe you're on your way to a conference room. Maybe you're on your way to a job interview. Maybe you're on your way uh, to a party. Maybe you're on your way to a date. Maybe you're on your way to uh, your first day of work. Hey, let's believe that this benediction is true of you. The people who first received this benediction in Corinth, ancient Corinth, they're dead and gone and into eternity. We are here now in linear time and space and we need these benedictions and we need these blessings and we need God to mingle with us. I'm believing that God is gonna mingle with you in some of the most ordinary, daily, average moments of your life. Now, to the third benediction, written in the letter to those living in Ephesus, another strategic city in antiquity. It's at the end of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter three, verses 17 to 19 that Paul writes this. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every every holy one experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Jesus in all of its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive is his love. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Man, it, I mean, if we read that every day, we probably, our whole life would probably change. Did you hear that? Constantly using your faith, the life of Jesus will be released deep inside of you. And the resting place, please hear this, the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Oh man, if I could take another hour, I would. The resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. I'm gonna say it again. The resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. His love is a resting place. I want you to rest in his love in 2024. Rest in his love and it will become the very source and root of your life. Don't earn his love. Don't work for his love. Don't warrant his love. Don't try to adhere to some rules and lists of laws that somehow beckon the attention of God. No, you have his attention. You have his intimate involvement in your life and he wants you to rest in his unending love. Jesus said from the cross, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And so he did. He poured out his wrath and judgment on all of humanity in the body and person of Jesus. And so that what is left for humanity is love and acceptance and the gift of righteousness. Rest in his love and let it become the very source and root of your life. I urge you, I commend you with this benediction and this blessing that even while you wake in the morning or in the middle of the night or you're slipping off to sleep at night, remind yourself, I'm loved. Ask him to remind you of the resting place of his love. His love is a resting place. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but have you ever found like luscious green grass kind of at a park or maybe in the middle of the wilderness and you lay down on the dirt, on the grass, in the valley, in that setting, and you just kind of sit there and you can hear the birds and you can see the butterflies and maybe you can smell the scent of flowers and you're like, whoa, 
this is kind of a euphoric moment. I'm believing on a consistent basis in 2024, you're going to rest in his love. It's going to be like that luscious green grass in a valley or a mountaintop or a wilderness somewhere where you could hear the birds chirping. Maybe you could hear the river rushing. Maybe you could smell the flowers, but you're going to rest in his endless love for you in 2024. Man, I'm going to be honest with you. This message is absolutely encouraging me. And in conclusion, I want to take you to my fourth and final benediction. It's the second letter that Paul pins in Thessalonians, living in Thessaloniki, Thessalonica. And he says this, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, Now may the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father God, who loved us and in his wonderful grace gave us eternal comfort and a beautiful hope that cannot fail, encourage your hearts and inspire you with strength with strength to always do and speak what is good and beautiful in his eyes. Did you hear that? Now may Jesus and our Father God, who loved us with his wonderful grace and gave us eternal comfort and beautiful hope that cannot fail, encourage your hearts. I want to remind you as we close another year on this planet, we have eternal comfort and we have good hope. Eternal comfort. Why is it called eternal comfort? I want comfort now because evidently the promise and even anticipation of eternity, that's right, a new heaven and a new earth. And we will go there someday, friends. And there we will be reunited. In fact, the scripture prophesies that the lion and the lamb will lay together. What does that mean? That even the animals that are at odds with each other will become companions. There'll be peace in nature. There'll be peace among the creatures and the crawlers and the animals and the fish and the whales and the birds. There'll be peace. Quite literally, you and I will be in utopia. Quite literally, you and I will be in paradise. There will be no more wars. There will be no more disease. There will be no more loss. There will be no more pain. There'll be no more gossip. There'll be no more mean comments on the internet. There'll be no more critics. You and I will finally be free. As I sit here and record this sermon, my lower back hurts quite a bit. That's probably from golf and an old, old mattress. And so Chelsea and I are set to do some mattress shopping in the next few days, true story. But you know, the day will come, I'll go home and all the back pain will be gone. All the neck pain will be gone. I've been having pain in my leg. Someone's like, that's a sciatica. And I'm like, that's for old people. That's not me. All those misfiring nerves will be quieted and our bodies will be whole. I crave that time. And maybe without even knowing it, so do you. We have eternal comfort. Sometimes we don't have temporary comfort, but we have eternal comfort at all times. That comfort that says we're going home soon. But in the meantime, God has something for us to do here on earth. And more than anything, that's be with him. We also have a beautiful hope that cannot fail. Why? Because we've been made right in our relationship with God. That no matter what our performance says, no matter what we do or don't do or fail to do again, that we resolved at the beginning of 2024, we're definitely going to do. Those 10 extra pounds, I'm going to lose them. Halfway through the year, if you find yourself not making good on your resolutions, I got good news for you. There is eternal comfort and there is a hope that cannot fail. And that hope is whether or not you fulfill your resolutions, you have righteousness through Jesus. What does that mean? You have a right relationship with God, not through your performance, but the performance of Jesus. I want to speak over your life, eternal comfort, and hope that does not disappoint. That's going to be 2024 for you. And in your darkest moments, and there will be dark days in 2024, there's just no doubt about it. And in those dark nights of the soul, that you will find a grip from God in the form of eternal comfort and hope that doesn't disappoint. And just, I pray that over your life. 
I pray that over your marriage, your family, your friends, your relationships, your aspirations, your desires, your intentions, your purpose, your plan, all of those things will be filled and permeated with hope and with an eternal comfort. And it says that will encourage your hearts and inspire you with strength to always do and speak what is good and beautiful in his eyes. I believe that what we do and what we speak in 2024 can be dramatically affected and shaped by this eternal comfort and this hope that doesn't disappoint. What I've given you today is what is real to me. It's real to me. I'm not gonna do this on camera, but I'm gonna ask our community all over the world to join me in taking what we call communion. Communion is simply a commemorative act, a spiritual act, a powerful act that Jesus did in what we call the Last Supper. If you can find some wine or some juice and some bread, I wanna urge you to take a moment the end of this broadcast, when this turns off, take the bread, take the cup. Remember, his blood was spilled, his body was beaten, and the world was never the same. And as we drink that juice or that wine, we taste that bread, that cracker, that chip, whatever it is, we are reminded of his blood and his body. And we're reminded again that we have eternal comfort. and We have hope that doesn't disappoint for Jesus has changed the world as we know it. I love you, church. Can I pray for you? God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. It shapes years come and gone and it will shape the year ahead. I pronounce the blessings of God that make a rich and add no sorrow to it on your people today through the phenomenon of technology And through these lenses and cameras and lights, I ask that you would meet people right where they are. We thank you for that. Even bless our conversation with each other. As this broadcast ends and we start to talk with each other, maybe in that room where we're watching this, I pray you'd bless that conversation. Give us wisdom and understanding. And may we absorb all of these blessings that are ours, not because of what we have done, but because of what you have done. We thank you for that. And lastly, if you're watching it, you'd like to receive the free gift of forgiveness that only Jesus offers. Just say, I receive it. I receive him and it's done and you're never the same. Let us know if we can help you, encourage you. Like I said earlier, Pastor Chat's available to you. Hey, happy new year, church home. Let's live in these blessings. Another year comes to a close and another year begins. It's gonna be great. Love you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Oh, so we say, Ah.
make his face shine upon be gracious to you the lord turn his lovely face toward you Thank <laughs> you.